We're focusing on fresh herbs coming up next. Hi, I'm Alan Smith. Welcome to Garden to Table. We're having a party out here at the farm. It's a little chilly, but it's all about herbs, which is warming people up because we have a great menu in store. You know, herbs are so important for many reasons. Their beauty, their flavor, their fragrance, and even medicinal uses. In today's show, we're going to cover not only how to cook and harvest with fresh herbs, we're also going to dry and store them for later use. Plus, I want to show you how to make this amazing pesto that's both tasty and versatile. And to finish it off, a tantalizing herb-inspired cocktail. Hey, we definitely have a lot to cover in today's show. But first, let's head up to the vegetable garden where I'm going to meet up with Jerry Tronfeld. He's an award-winning chef and author. Come on. Well, I thought I'd get you out of the kitchen for a while so you could get out here and uh, get a little fresh air. Yeah, thanks for rescuing me, Alan. <laughs> You're welcome. Well, I know you've been harvesting some herbs out of this little little garden here, and how's it been working for you? It's great. I mean, it, it's so nice to when you're cooking to be able to just go out there and cut them right before you use them. It's such it, a difference. It, it, it? Yeah, it really is. Yeah. I, I just love it. You know, this little garden, uh, there's a pair of them, and they mark the entrance to our big vegetable garden. And this is the first year we've grown herbs here. Uh -huh. uh, typically, we grow flowers, and I really like the herb garden here. And we, we tried to be a little ornamental and creative with the pansies and the red cabbage because, um, well, it likes cool temperatures and it's, they're really showing out right now in May. Well, you know, I love mixing in uh, flowers and vegetables in my herb garden, and especially edible ones like the pansies. Yeah, yeah. The ones that I like to grow from seed are usually in the parsley family, and uh, so things like dill and cilantro, those I always plant from seed. I just find they do better that way. Um, things like uh, sage and rosemary and thyme, I usually buy the starts. Yeah, well, they're, uh, they're certainly a woodier type. Right. Uh, the stems are woodier, and right. those, those are... And they're perennials as well. And of course, your basil, I'm sure you grow all that from seed. Well, no, I, I buy the starts because in my climate in, in the Northwest, uh, basil doesn't really like to be outside until until really July. Yeah, so you, yeah. if you start from seed, you'll, you'll uh, be way behind. Well, I, I start from little plugs as well. We love to plant the little peat pots of uh -huh. them. And uh, this is what we call boxwood basil oh, here yeah. in this garden with a little tiny mouse ear leaf on it. One of my favorites is uh, sage. Especially oh, yeah. like the golden sage, the oh, variegated yeah. one. And, yeah. and, then it, and then the flower. Yeah, I love those big purple flowers are beautiful. They're great and they're great to, to eat also. They taste, taste great. Well, that reminds me, I guess we better get back to the kitchen, get you in All your right. apron and get okay. started. Great. I'm going to be making an asparagus salad with fried sage. And this is really one of my favorite dishes to do when asparagus is in season. It's great because you can either roast or grill the asparagus and um, you can serve it warm or room temperature, but it just makes a beautiful uh, presentation on a buffet table. And uh, I start with asparagus. Um, this is sort of a, a medium sized asparagus. If it's very fat, I'll, I'll peel it, but this seems to be just, uh, just right for roasting uh, today. And I'm going to cut the, the bottom quarter of the spears off. Some people like to, to break them off, but I find it's, it's just a lot easier to uh, take the whole bunch and cut the bottom off. And I'm going to be putting it on a roasting pan or a baking sheet. And uh, I'm going to put a little bit of olive oil on it. So some extra virgin olive oil and just a little bit of salt. So just pour that right over, um, a little bit of kosher salt. And then uh, some chopped sage. And I'll, I'll, sh I'll show you what the sage looks like when I, when I prepare it for frying, but I've got some chopped up there. And then I'll just take my tongs and toss it up. I just want to coat all the spears a little bit with the oil and we'll be set to go. So I can either put this on a grill, which is really delicious because it takes on that, that extra kind of smoky grilled flavor, or I can just put it in a hot oven. So I can put it in a 450 degree oven. It takes about five minutes. 
Now you can tell when the asparagus is done if you just pick up one of the spears and when it's limp and it bends a little bit then it's, then it's cooked enough. Next thing I'm going to do is fry the sage which is kind of the fun part. And so I've got some oil that's heated to about 300 degrees and uh, it's just, uh, just nice canola oil. I've got that ready and then I've got my sage here. <clears throat> and uh, this is uh, sage that we just harvested from the garden and it's um, this variety of sage is called garden sage, which is just like the old-fashioned sage. And this kind of sage um, blooms in the, in the spring. And, and the, the flowers are some of my favorite edible flowers. They have this sweet flavor um, and a little bit like the sage leaf, but, but just a beautiful garnish. We don't have any today, but you can see what the leaves look like. They're, um, they're much thinner than some of the other varieties, and that's what I like about the garden sage also. Uh, some of the other varieties have very thick, felty leaves, and, uh, but I really like the, the light, thin le leaves of the garden sage, and it's really a nice one to fry. So I'm just taking the, the leaves off just like that, and I leave a little bit of stem at the bottom. It doesn't really matter. I've got about 30 leaves here, and that's enough for the salad. And uh, to fry the sage, you just make sure that the, the leaves are dry. So if I washed it earlier, I want to pat them off with paper towels, and then I'm just going to put them all at once into this oil. It's going to make a bit of a noise, but it won't splatter. So there they go. And really, you just want to fry them until they stop making noise, and that's how you know when they're done. And they're going to crisp up, and they get beautiful and translucent. And once you fry the sage, like if you, if you try to nibble on a, a raw sage leaf, it's it's a little bit astringent and um, not that great on your tongue, but once they're fried, they get kind of crisp and nutty and light. They're a beautiful garnish. I'm going to sprinkle a little bit of salt on them. All right. And the next thing I'm going to do is to uh, prepare the dressing. Get this hot oil out of the way. All right. And uh, so I've got a nice big bowl to toss the salad in. I've got about three tablespoons of lemon juice. I've got about a quarter cup of extra virgin olive oil, a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, and then I'm going to use the uh, zest of uh, about a half a lemon. So I'll just use this uh, plain here and I like to use these sort of upside down and to ru uh, rub the plain over the lemon instead of the other way around. And that goes in there. I'm just going to whisk it up. And then I'm just going to toss the asparagus in with that. So <clears throat> get nice and coated. <clears throat> and uh, so if, if, you, if you grill or roast it, you can just um, let the asparagus sit at room temperature. And then right before you serve it, you can go ahead and, and uh, put it in the dressing. Just toss that up. And then I've got a uh, platter to put it out on. And oval platters work really nicely with the, with the sprigs. And you can just arrange it out like that. Kind of fan it out a little bit. There we go. And the next thing I'm going to do is shave some Parmesan Reggiano on. And you want to use a really nice high quality uh, Parmesan cheese. You just take the block in your hand and I'm just using a uh, a peeler. I really like these horizontal peelers. And you can just make shavings of it right over the top. A nice, uh, a nice long shavings. And if they're too big, you can kind of just break them up a little bit. And uh, so you've got the Parmesan cheese and then this beautiful fried sage. And the combination of the lemon, the sage, and the Parmesan cheese just works really nicely with this. And there you are, and that's ready for the buffet. An herb. I say an herb. Uh oh. I'm gonna go with a vegetable. It's in the herb family, isn't it? With, uh, along with the spices. Vegetable. 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 Garlic. Herb. Oh. Let's do that one more time. <laughs> Herb. 
herb. Well, garlic is technically a vegetable. Although we use it in cooking like an herb, it's so flavorful. You know, what's interesting about this plant is related to onions, shallots, leeks, and chives. If you live in a mild part of the country, you can grow garlic year round. Now, I've just come in from the vegetable garden where we've been harvesting this glorious garlic by the bushel. If you're into cooking, or better than that, into good food, then you find yourself in the kitchen always reaching for garlic, at least I do. I like to grow garlic, and this time of year we're beginning to harvest what we planted back in the early spring. You see, if you harvest garlic too soon, the cloves or the bulbs don't mature fully, and if you wait too long, well, those cloves can split, and you can actually cause some of the stems to rot, and it makes it difficult to pull it out of the ground. Now, you see, the easiest way to know when to harvest a garlic is just to look at the leaves. When the leaves are about a third brown, you'll need to start testing the bulbs to see if they're the proper size. Now, take a look at this one. This is perfect. You can see how much dieback we already have on the plant itself, and look at the size of that bulb. It's a really nice... This is one of my favorite varieties. It's called Italian Easy Peel. And it just um, is called that because, well, it's easy to grow, but more than that, it's easy to take the skin off the garlic when you're getting ready to crush it and use it in the kitchen. Now, one tip, I like for the soil to be slightly moist. It just makes pulling the garlic out of the ground much easier. You can take a little trowel like this to give it a boost, but if you let the soil get too dry and hard, you'll often snap them off right here. Now, we bundle these in bundles of 10 plants and hang them in a cool, dry place and then I'll have garlic throughout the entire season. So you planted herbs this summer, tended them with care, and now you're ready to harvest them for using in recipes. While fresh herbs are certainly a delight, don't forget to dry some too. It's a simple process and it really doesn't take much time. You can air dry herbs by suspending them in bundles, but I prefer to use the oven. You see, it's almost instant gratification. The leaves won't get dusty, and I don't have to worry about finding the perfect place to hang them for the process to begin. To get started, just gather the herbs in the early morning after the dew has evaporated, but before the sun gets too intense. Then wash them and pat them until they're completely dry. Then remove the leaves from the stems and spread them out on a cookie sheet or recycled aluminum tray. And place the herbs in an oven heated to its lowest temperature for several hours and check them regularly. Once dried, just crush or crumble them and place them in airtight jars that are labeled and dated. Store your dried herbs in a cool, dark place. Now here's a recipe for an all-purpose mix that's good on meats and vegetables. This basic dried herb blend requires one teaspoon of black pepper, two tablespoons of dried oregano, two tablespoons of dried basil, two tablespoons of dried thyme, and one tablespoon of dried rosemary. Just mix all of the ingredients and place them in an airtight jar. This makes about a half a cup. Now remember, after about six months to a year, these dried herbs are gonna lose their flavor. If the fragrance is still strong, the herbs are still usable and viable. Now here's something you might find helpful to know. When you substitute dried herbs for fresh herbs in a recipe, you'll want to use about half the amount. The essential oils are concentrated in dry herbs, so you don't have to use as much. You know, versatility is a good thing in many aspects of life. I particularly enjoy it in plants. One of my favorite and most versatile herbs slash greens that I use here is arugula. You see, we grow it in the garden, in the fall and the spring, we sow lots of it. It germinates very quickly, but we also grow it in containers. Now what I'm sharing with you here today is an arugula pesto. It's really, really good and easy to make. And it's a great use for arugula, whether you're bringing it out of your own garden or just picking some up at the market. So why don't we get started? We're gonna take three cloves of garlic and I'm just gonna slightly crush this garlic with a knife, big fat cloves. And I'm gonna throw these into the food processor can see this requires very few ingredients. It's really, really good. I'm going to give those a little run. Okay, next I'm going to take 
walnuts. These are toasted walnuts. I have a half a cup of those. I'm just going to add. And then I have a half a cup of flat leaf Italian parsley. I love this stuff. It's so beautiful growing in the garden. And again, it's another wonderful herb for growing in containers. So I'm going to put that in there just like that. And then I have two tablespoons of lemon juice. All right. Now with all those ingredients in there, I'm going to take my arugula. And what I have here, um, I have three cups of tightly packed arugula. So you can see that's about one cup. And then I've got two more cups here. So I'm just going to pack this all in. It smells so good. I like to cut it young like this. These are small, small leaves of arugula. I don't want it to get too, too tough. And pop it in here. And now I'm going to run it through the food processor. It looks like I've got a little straggler over there, so I'm going to stop. Push everything down. There we go. What I'm going to do is get this ready to add some olive oil. Put this back. And what I'm going to do now is, is put a third of a cup of olive oil in. Oh, look at that. Okay, it looks like it's about done. Let's take this out. Beautiful. Just beautiful. Yeah, take a look at the color there. All right, what I'm going to do now is I want to put this in a bowl. This is so fresh tasting. The combination of all these ingredients, but particularly the arugula and the lemon. Make it very, very fresh. I like to serve this with grilled meat, chicken, or pork. Okay, there we go. All right, now what I want to do is take some Parmesan cheese. I have one third of a cup here. Take a third of a cup. I'm just going to mix this all together. And then the last two ingredients are salt and pepper. And just a little bit of salt. You can salt and pepper to taste. Notorious for using a lot of cracked pepper. I really love it. Now you can use this immediately. I love to use this arugula pesto on my favorite pasta. I, I like bow tie pasta. If you're not going to use it immediately, you can store it in the refrigerator for up to five days. But if you do that, what you want to do is take a little bit of olive oil, smooth it out like I've done here in the bottom of this bowl, I'm just pour some olive oil over the top and spread it around like this. So you make a slight thin layer or covering over the pesto. And what this does is it keeps your arugula from turning dark if you're not going to use it immediately. Another great way to use arugula. Give it a try. Uh, this evening I'm going to make for you the Rocktown Rebound. This happens to be one of my favorite cocktails ever. It's really refreshing. We're going to make it with some fresh raspberries and some fresh basil and Brandon's gin. So the first thing that I'm going to show you all about mixology is we're going to put in our herbs first. So we're going to use some local basil. And you don't have to use a lot, you know, you can just, unless you really like a lot of basil. And then we're going to drop in our raspberries. And the reason why we do our raspberries, or if you're doing another type of drink that has uh, maybe lemons or limes or strawberries, we muddle this, the citric acid of the raspberries is going to help cut down the basil, so the essential oils are going to come out of it. So it's going to give us a nice balance. Even though it sounds kind of strange, it's going to really balance off the tartness and a little bit of the sweetness of the berries. So then what we're going to do is just muddle that. 
And you can use some simple syrup. This is a martini, so obviously when you're doing a martini, you want it to taste like a martini. Or you can do this on the rocks. It smells good. Smell it. Doesn't that smell nice? It smells really good, right? It smells really fresh. Okay, so then we're going to add um, our gin. Because it's a martini, it's going to be a bit of a bigger pour, so I'm going to do about two ounces. And if you're at home and you're doing this, you can always use a jigger. You can get that at your local liquor store, or you can use anything in the kitchen, what have you. So we're going to add our ice, fill it to the top of your pint glass. And when you're doing a presentation for any of your guests, you always like to do it in the shaker so that they can see the stacking and the layering of all your ingredients. And then, excuse me. My rule of thumb is shake until too cold to hold. Literally, until too cold to hold. This is always the fun part. And you can put your own twist into it. You know, if you really want to get into it, yeah, there you go. You can, you can really put a, a nice little shake into it. And when music's going on, it's even more fun. So, there you have it. Cheers. The Rock Town New Gown. We want everybody to come by with a trowel and throw in a little bit of soil into this rose garden because we want everybody here to be a part of this community. Well, we are having such a good time getting set up for this herb and rose event. We've had the opening of the rose garden. Now we're getting the tables all laid for a wonderful meal. And I wanted to have a little fun here. I wanted to mix both herbs and roses. So let's start with the herbs first. So the plant I just placed here is a variegated pineapple mint, wonderful aroma. And I've planted it in simple terracotta pots. That's the theme here because we're really going with apricot, oranges, those sorts of colors. So they work beautifully with terracotta. And here I've placed in a different size container, oregano, and in this tiny little container is a little sage plant. But by grouping these three different shapes and sizes together, it makes it more visually interesting. Now, let's move from this over to some robust color. Just take a look at what we have here in these flower arrangements. A beautiful mixture of Gerber daisies, roses, and snapdragons, and a few lilies thrown in. Again, sort of picking up that warm apricot color. Now, I'm really big about color echo, staying with the color theme. And if you look closely, what we've done is we've mixed up the napkins. So the linens are all different colors, but they're all within those warm colors, yellow, red, orange. And to carry out that theme, we've also used these votives, but we're using this beautiful colored glass in the same color theme. So these are gonna glow beautifully once the sun goes down, which leads me to talk about mold trick by taking limbs and wrapping them with Christmas lights, which really adds a festive touch. The centerpiece, well, it's just an elaboration of these smaller arrangements where we took an urn and just filled it full of all kinds of flowers. Some bought and many gathered right here on the farm. Okay, I should point out another constant here, the color white. We have white chairs, white plates, and white linens. So it all blends together. All right, so the party started. I better get ready. Well, that's all the time we have for today's show. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have. And I hope you've picked up a few tidbits on growing herbs. Growing them yourself can be really satisfying. And make sure you try that wonderful fried sage and asparagus recipe. Until next time, good eating and good health. <laughs>